Check, 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 check. Dispatches from Planet Funk. This is the Aced Out Podcast. Dedicated to all whom the man tried to ace out. By profiting from the soul. Without stopping to give props to the prophets of soul. Mm-hmm. Can you dig that? This is your boy Ace Allen, a.k.a. Barack Wayne. And we're brought to you by Pete. P-E-T-E. Otherwise known as... People for the ethical treatment of ear holes. Everybody here is Funk and Not Fam affiliated. Because Funk is just fun with the K. That's why they pronounce it funky. What do you think about that, Jay? You know it. Jay Stone. Now, I don't think this is a good idea. I told you we shouldn't be doing video shows. We should do audio only. <laughs> well, all right. First of all, this already makes me nervous, man. I don't know how to sit. What do you think? Should I sit hey. like this? Indian style. Maybe like this. Crisscross. Hey, that's not politically <laughs> correct. You have to say Native American style. <laughs> All right. Well, I got my hat on because I don't want to get shiny head syndrome with the lights. I know what happens when you have a bald head. This is our first video show, Jay Stone. You believe it? Oh, man. This is our 24th episode and our first video episode. And we're so proud to be here. Since we're on video and we probably have new listeners listening to our show, I thought we'd reintroduce ourselves for the people before we have our guest. So, hello. My name is Ace Allen. Uh, I'm a Funkinaut. You heard me mention the Funkinauts before. I'm the bass player for the Funkinauts. This is my boy Jay Stone. He is the leader of the Funkinauts and one of his chief creators, guitar player, uh, guitar player, vocalist, and uh, nutritionist for the Funkinauts. <laughs> um, we have an album out. Yeah. It's called The Bible Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. This song that you're hearing right now is on that album. It's called I Can Never Be. It's written and produced by my boy Jay Stone over here. We actually have a music video for this song as well. I Can Never Be by the Funkinauts. We're your new favorite podcast, if you didn't know that. We started in October of 2018, back when we were young and foolish, Jay Stone. Uh, You can consider our podcast a public service. We do deep dive interviews with greats of funk and soul history and beyond, um, especially that for those that we feel don't get enough credit, right, truly, Jay Stone? Truly, truly. So we're here to make sure we get they get that credit. Uh, past episodes, we have had Rusty Allen from Sly and the Family Stone. Mm-hmm. We've had Amuka, a.k.a. Sheila Horn, Bride of Funkenstein. Mm-hmm. We had Vet Stone on. Yep. We had uh, Flying J from right. Fishbone. <laughs> We had J.W., J.W., who's also one of our producers, J.W. from Parlette. We had uh, Joe Pep Harris from Undisputed Truth. Smiling faces. We had the late great, he's no longer with us. Uh, We had Robin Russell from New Birth. Robin Russell. Stymie from the Pimp Jones Love Orchestra. We had uh, Rick, Rick Gardner. Rick Gardner. My name is Rick. From Bootsy's Rubber Band. Who else did we have? After that, we had... Uh, oh, we had Richard Segovia. Oh, we had Chocolate from Graham Central Station. That's right. Yes, sir. Um, we've had a lot of great guests on. And this past year, we've had... Uh, who do we have? We've had Sweet LD from mm-hmm. MC Hammer. Yep. You mentioned Rick before. Maruga. We, yeah. We had Maruga Booker. We had Steve Boyd. That's right. Andre Fox. Don't forget Shady Grady Shady Thomas. Shady Grady. Uh, you guys, by the way, go to Funkinauts.com if you want to get yourself a Funkinauts t-shirt and also want to get a copy of our album. This is our end of the year show, and we're going to be doing great shows next year. Uh, tune in for the outro to this episode. We're going to talk to you about a special we have coming up uh, with Richard Segovia, who's the mayor of the mission in Latin Rock. Mm-hmm. Um, you can listen to us on Stitcher. Listen to us on Spotify. Apple Podcasts, tune in, Overcast. But where should you check us out? Where's the best place to check us out, Jay Stone? AceOutPodcast.com. Let's see if I know how to spell that. That's A C E D O U T P O D C A S T dot com. All right, let me fix my outfit. <laughs> let me make sure I'm ready. Okay, so we're going to get our next guest on the phone. She's in San Diego, so we're going to call her Jay Stone. On the phone. 
Hold up. Yeah, we're going to call her. She's it. here. She's here, dude. She's what? here. She's here. Stop. No, no, no. Here. We're just a little podcast. We don't have uh, the means for that. We usually just call people on the phone. Yeah, uh, she's here. She's here. She's here. Star Colors is Star, here. She's here, blood. Oh, jeez. There she's right there. Okay, everybody. Introducing Star Colors here go. live in the studio. Come on. Oh, my God. You can never Wow, she's here. I didn't know that. So that's why Live. that microphone is there. I thought that was in case you wanted me to sit next to you here and now, now and then, you know. Good to see you, Star. Good to see you guys. Hello, uh, right. Ace Out Podcast. Hey, how you doing? It's so great to so have you I'm so happy here. to be here with you guys. Right on. And I know that um, the traveling, flying on a plane, it's not that fun these days, right? You didn't have traveling too much fun with that. Traveling is... An experience. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Please be vaccinated and stay away from the crazies. And yeah, you know, yeah it's, it's it's trying. You know. Yeah, and we're vaccinated too, by the way. Just so you know. Yeah, you know, I threw that out there. Let me talk to everybody about you for a minute. Okay, so we have Star Colors here, and she's a real life Wonder Woman in music, the Amazon Warrior on bass, uh, raised in Philly. And she played in P-Funk. Well, she's always part of the family, but she played in the band uh, officially from 92 to 2002. Uh, She joined uh, playing with George Clinton when he was signed to Paisley Park, the label, of course, from who? (laughs) Prince. And she has a great Prince story to tell as well that we'll get into in a little bit. Uh, Now she leads her own band and has her own music. Uh, She was featured this year in June in Bass Player Magazine slash Guitar World. Mm Mm-hmm. And she knows how to funk, but she also seriously rocks. Um, she's shared the stage with Living Color, with Bad Brains. Dope. Uh, she was part of the VH1 uh, series Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. <laughs> and through that show, she worked with and rocked out with Paul Stanley, Sammy Hagar, Phil Collins, you know, not Phil Collins, but, uh, you know, from Def Leppard, Jay Stone, mm-hmm. the gu- yeah, guitarist. the guitar dude. Marky Ramone, <laughs> Matt Sorum, and Duff McKagan from GNR. Uh, <laughs> her current album uh, is called Living Galaxy, and that's on Cosmic Nation Productions. Yes, it is. And she also has Star Colors Live, featuring a song that I really like, Lady Likes Bottom. <laughs> and she also has... Welcome to the universe. She mm-hmm. appears on albums also with Lies Curry, Andre Fox, and uh, actually the album fondly known to Poefoam by George Clinton. She also performs on as well. Mm-hmm. And speaking of Living Galaxy, do me a favor, Dominic, behind the board. Let's listen to a little bit of Let Your Star Shine before we kick off this interview. This is original music by Star Colors. Let Your Star Shine off Living Galaxy album. Let's hear that. Listen to this, Jay Stone. The drummer, my drummer Sandro Feliciano. Amazing. There it is. 
Who's playing guitar on that? That is uh, Lodge Curry on guitar. Mm. That's Lodge Curry on guitar? Nice. Yeah. I didn't know he could play like that. And, um, yeah, and I think, um, I think Mike Hampton's on there, too. Mike Hampton and Lodge Curry on that song? Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. It sounds great. It's a really Thank amazing you. album. We're going to listen to more Thank cuts you. from it. It's really rocking. But getting back to, let me talk to you. The first thing I want to ask you about, because we're going to talk about your whole career, you know, like coming up and all through the years up until now. But one thing I want to ask you about first at the top is talk to you about drummers, mm -hmm. um, funk drummers mm -hmm. that you've worked with. So um, so I have that right. So you were in the, the P-Funk camp from 92 to 2002. So you have to understand something that those were, yeah, the technical time, but... Um, even though I'm not uh, part of the, the road crew currently, I'm still a member of the funk mob because the funk mob is sure. really like a mafia. And mm -hmm. when you're in and, and you're the, the Don, the Godfather loves you, you're in right. for life. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So even <laughs> though I'm very much doing my own career and things, I'm still get called in right. for whatever events show you know uh -huh. personal things whatever so that's how uh that is and that's a, a blessing you know Did, you you attended george's uh 80th <laughs> birthday party recently right? yes the dude <laughs> turned 80 years old wow and it was a wonderful uh uh celebration we had out out at this uh enclosed private uh courtyard in this you wouldn't believe the section of la where it was the neighborhood but inside it was gorgeous mm -hmm. Nice mm. private courtyard, yeah. and you know, just just you know, people of of course, you know, giving the respect to dude. He's he's eighty, mm -hmm. you know, he's still with us and and still going on. He's unretired. Yeah, you yeah, know. right, right, right. Because <laughs> I saw his retirement show in two thousand nineteen. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Over, he's unretired, <laughs> and P Funk is back, stronger oh, than ever. Uh, I lost. Stronger. Sorry, I lost the mm -hmm. th the thread of my thought though. So I want to ask you about working with some of these drummers. Because you'd be a great person to ask about. So um, you've played with, say, for example, Guy Curtis on drums? Great question. I'm never asked about the drummers I've played with enough in the P-Funk. We ask all the important questions about <coughs> yourself. The right? best. And, and, and since, and, as you guys know, being musicians, guitars, and bass players, you know how important yeah. the drummer is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I first came in in 92, Guy Curtis was the drummer then. He um, he didn't get to stay as long as we all wanted him to because of some physical um, problems. He's all right oh, now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. But uh, after that, it was uh, well Frankie Cash Waddy, who was from Bootsy. It, you, you guys yep. know. Yep. Of he was also a, a P Funk uh, veteran as well. He came in, and then it was. Uh, Blackbird McKnight, uh -huh. which you all know is yeah. a legendary lead guitarist, yes. yeah. has sat on the drums many, many times. Really? When I was playing, yes. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> okay? okay. At, at shows or in? At shows, oh, on stage. Shit. Nice. How is he on the skins? Bird is decent. He's powerful and he rocks. He's loud. Wow. and he, Yeah. So who would, you know, have to give that one. Uh, then there was also. Uh, I see his face, and if I don't remember his name, he'll shoot me. Um, uh, Gabe Gonzalez? Gabriel Gonzalez, my brother. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh. I forgot Gabe would be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Gabe Gonzalez, then... Jerome? Jerome Braley. That's what you're talking about, Jerome yeah. Braley? Uh, you, Jerome is, is a veteran from yeah, the 70s. Yeah. I know you guys know. Mm -hmm. He came back briefly during the the early 90s when I was there and he just in and out mm -hmm. you know he was kind of like I'm here I'm up, da, 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 and he was gone so that uh -huh. you know um Rico Lewis ah Rico Lewis okay Rico bad and have you also has and Ron Wright Ron Wright throw him in there mm -hmm. Ron Wright yes mm -hmm. I was okay. gonna say um has Dennis Chambers ever come on the stage and of course I know Dennis Uncle Dennis. Um, I personally haven't played with Dennis. Gotcha. I know him. He's a big brother. You know, we're 
family, but I've never physically played on stage with mm. him. Um, Will Calhoun from Living Color did sit in <laughs> and play drums. Okay, I love him. Yeah, mm -hmm. sick. And um, Ellen, would you believe that I got to play with the legendary Buddy Miles before he passed? Oh, wow. That's great. He came to uh, when we were in Chicago, and he came to a show, and people were like, "Buddy Miles is here," <laughs> and we're like, uh, "Buddy Miles, Jimi Hendrix, Buddy Miles." And you know, and he sat in and played Red Hot Mama with me. I was blown I heard away. That. Blown away, <laughs> y'all. Buddy Miles. Wow. wow. Awesome. Yeah, so that was that was pretty cool. Now, um okay, so let me ask you this, because I'm curious about so um a lot of these shows, these P Funk shows, I saw some of these shows back then. They're very long. They've gone for a <laughs> while. So um how would it work with as far as the rhythm section? So would you play the whole show? Would they switch out drummers oh, during the no, show? no, no, no. Let me explain. Yeah, the, yeah. The, how does that work? Okay, this is how the hierarchy of the Parliament Funkadelic works. <laughs> there's a... Okay. For... There's a A, B, and C. Uh -huh. Okay? An A, B, and C. Okay. All right. So... Lodge Curry is the first chair bass chair okay 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 then uh when i came in uh uh jeff bun cherokee bun was the second mm -hmm. bass chair i became the third so what happens is lodge will come out and do so many songs uh, majority mm -hmm. Then Cherokee comes out And he does his section of songs And then I come out At uh -huh. the end And do my section of songs And that's how It works Okay Gotcha You know what I mean So This rotating orchestra mm -hmm. Of 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 people And You know <laughs> To say that it's a, a You know it, Let's just say it's a Always a lively <laughs> funk event yeah you yeah, know yeah. but but that's but that's how that works sure yeah. how about um like getting re getting ready for do you all rehearse in sectionals or like if he's first chair what is this is he in, responsible for, re for rehearsing you on stuff i know what is, you mean yeah, you know um I mean? there is a band director when gary scheider you guys you know mm -hmm. yes gary. Yep. gary who i miss terribly still yeah. we so all you miss do. him every day right? miss gary scheider every single day gary was the band director mm -hmm. okay gary mm -hmm. was the band leader right blackbird mcknight was the 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 the, the conductor director okay person who counts everybody off right leads Got the songs yeah. everybody everybody pay attention to me uh -huh. counting it off yeah so rehearsals it, it would depend it would depend on what event was happening like when we did um we did Lollapalooza in 94 we rehearsed down in Florida for like two or three weeks and that was a time you were on the L Lollapalooza I oh remember. yeah yeah oh yeah i was yeah. on that Lollapalooza. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right first major tour was like yeah this is great. that was awesome but, um we did rehearse in sections just for that period and then also when we did like the mothership uh 20th anniversary in 96 mm -hmm. in New York. We brought back the spaceship on stage and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. We rehearsed then. So we don't always, you know, but for major things like that, we'll break it down. Okay, vocals over here. Mm -hmm. You know, guitars, basses over here. You know, horns over here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but usually since the group is, 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 is you know, so um, um, aged and... and uh, uh, legendary, yeah, right. That there's usually not rehearsals per se because there's a songbook everybody knows exactly. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's more what it is. It's you in the group, okay? So it's your responsibility to learn this catalog, right? Of these songs, right? 
And if you're going to be in here, you need to know all 50,000 yeah. of this catalog of these songs. <laughs> right, right. Okay? You know, you know Parliament Funkadelic got 50,000 songs, right, right. okay? From errors from like the 60s to now. Oh, right, yeah. right. You know what I mean? So there's errors and mm-hmm. shit. And, uh, you know, excuse me, mm-hmm. and then errors and, and time periods. and Right. You know, so it, it if, if when you are brought into this... Uh, camp it as I was it it is a responsibility mm-hmm. that is put upon you to step up to the challenge right and they're watching don't right. think George and on down mm-hmm. Gary and all the the hierarchy it's like a funky IQ test oh it's it's a university yeah yeah straight up <laughs> it's a university straight up everybody uh as much as the the music is loved and People love it, and you're like, oh, I could play that. I could play. No, you can't. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Thank you. <laughs> no, you can't. Right. Okay. Right. You're going to maybe get the chance to learn, but that's the, uh, something that a lot of musicians, you know, discover uh-huh. when they come up and think, I'm sit in with y'all. Right. <laughs> no, you not. <laughs> you know? So, and, yeah. what, and this is really interesting to me because, you know, a lot of times, when, especially when people talk about P-Funk, it's just like a lot of talk about drugs and what kind of toothpaste George Clinton uses. <laughs> so, like, we have a lot of questions about certain things I always wondered about. So, for example, how's that on stage mix? Like, um, just so many musicians coming in and out. You get, It's kind of a crazy band. You're going, you're, you know, traveling out all these different kind of venues. Like, did you like? Did you have to play through like a muddy mix, or did you get a good on stage mix, or like? Well, this is the thing. We, when I came in, um, Bob Bishop Bob was Bishop. our head sound engineer, mm-hmm. you know, and he was, you know, also one of the heads of the the crew. So they would make sure, you know, wherever it was, whether it was a, a bar or a, a little, you know amphitheater right. or you know a, some big arena or yeah. you know whatever yeah, right. in between it would always make sure that you know knowing that you got all these people on stage you got to get this right mix you got to make sure everything right. is heard so they would you know do that but it's uh it looks crazy but right. It, right. but it's 100 percent or- orchestrated yeah you know what i mean 100 mm-hmm. i know it looks crazy but it is a orchestrated piece always mm-hmm. <laughs> always got you you know yeah mm-hmm. if you are new to the camp do you, do they assign you somebody like you know you know uh yeah actually mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um depending on what you do mm-hmm. you know when you come in right yeah yeah you are right actually and uh i've a handler I've been to, yeah a I, I've, handler. I've even had to take some uh uh, people uh, and un, 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 that George wanted me to uh, watch out for, yeah, when okay. he brought them out. So, yeah, right. that's, that definitely, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, uh, let's come, because I have so many PFON questions, but I don't want to get stuck on that. So let's, let's come back to that, because we, we have a million questions, just, even just about that. But also I want to know about, so um, you came up in Philadelphia. You're now in San Diego, but you came mm-hmm. up in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And your family, and we were talking about a little bit earlier when we were setting up, um, your father is involved with Black Panther Party, and he's an activist. My father, right? my 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 late father, he would love what you guys are doing. Absolutely, yeah? father was. What was his name? Kenneth Colors. Kenneth okay. Colors. Doctor Kenneth that Colors. That's yeah. what's up. <laughs> he was uh, a science professor. Okay. Oh, my father was an astrophysicist, oh, science wow. professor. Check I love that. And he was also um, uh, a ski coach. Uh, a tennis no a tennis captain Damn. and wow okay and also uh one of those counselors that worked with the young men you know before they get thrown in prison and they have that last chance right. at the juvenile yeah yeah you know he was one of them okay mm-hmm. and just you know he was just one of those guys i mean when i was growing up we were the only People of any color skiing in the seventies. Okay, I was gonna say yeah, <laughs> you know? that's pretty unusual. Yeah, we had yeah. a my father, we had a ski club, and it was called the Glider Ski Club. Nice. nice. And my father got his friends and family and peoples and stuff. And I remember me 
this can you imagine a little black girl racing down a mountain <laughs> skiing racing down a wow. mountain seven eight years old yeah. that was me okay like, now your dad lived grew up in philadelphia my father interesting it's just as crazy is originally from uh tulsa oklahoma okay oh damn. that's a spot he got the hell out of there okay. <laughs> and went to moved to philadelphia when i was i was born in colorado okay because he was in school. Uh, that's in how Colorado. he got to, to snow. Then exactly. Maybe. Okay, I got it. And that's exactly when the whole skiing thing started. Yeah. <laughs> from being in Colorado. <laughs> and then when we moved to Philadelphia when I was like two or three. So I remember being in the mountains in oh, Colorado yeah. Yeah. in the snow. Uh huh. And so when we got to Philly, he started the ski club uh -huh. and gathered his, you know, education friends and teacher oh, yeah. friends and people. And we would go up and down the, the eastern seaboard and up to Canada. Oh, wow. And um, and I remember I've always been in private schools and I'd start taking French when I was like in first grade, uh -huh. second grade. So we would go to Montreal in Canada and my parents would be like, our daughter speaks French. Speak French. Speak French. Speak French. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'd have to go, oh, oui, je m'appelle star, oh, je voudrais. Wow. And they would go, oh, see, she speaks French. Oh, oh, le petit fil. Oh. You know, so yeah. yeah, so I had a very uh, interesting childhood to say the least. No doubt. And if you can imagine this, this very unique man, um, yeah. encouraged me mm -hmm. to be the musician that that I am. So he was the one that bought the first acoustic guitars. Oh yeah, so you know, you, you started the bases, with all that stuff. Uh -huh. You started also with you started with cello and viola. And started started like with that. cello and viola and acoustic guitar, and I started. When I was taking acoustic guitar, I was taking uh, guitar lessons with this hippie, Mike. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He was one of those Crosby, Steels, and Nash brothers. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like he he was he wanted to be in there, but he they left him off. <laughs> Crosby, Steels, Nash, and Mike. <laughs> they forgot Mike, left him off. So that was my guitar teacher, and he was just phenomenal. <clears throat> and he was cool enough to tell my dad, "Hey, listen, Mr. Colors, you know your daughter can really play." You know, you she needs private lessons. The way from these these little children don't know what they're doing. She's serious. Mm. And I've never seen a young black girl. So my father was like, okay, well, all right. You know, so Ken put me in with uh, Mike. And then I just started playing guitar. I'm still playing cello. Mm -hmm. And I start hearing the bass. And I start hearing it and playing it on the guitar. And somebody said to me, hey, you need a bass guitar because uh -huh. you're playing. I said, oh. Okay, so then I got a right. bass like around 14, 15. Wow, so yeah. that's, and that's how you yeah. found out what, what that was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then also, mm -hmm. um, I have in my notes, so you got into rock like right away. Your uncle, was it your uncle that got you into it? Well, yeah, I, it, well, my, you know, my father was, he was, he was eclectic because, you know, he had Miles Davis records okay. and Thelonious Monk. Yeah. He had Santana and Sly and the Family Stone. You know, he had Jimi Hendrix and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I kind of got turned on. And then my uncle was definitely that AM ra rock radio, you know, then I got turned on to that. Then I realized that I was a rocker young. But, you know, <laughs> as I said, I'm from Philadelphia and Philadelphia is a major R&B jazz town. Right. <laughs> OK. With all these famous mm -hmm. R&B jazz people. So I knew like, OK, well, you from the town, but. You in the genre that, you know, nobody's going to give you any play with. So I just kind of, you know, rode along with my rocker friends, yeah, right. you know, on the outskirts. And then when the opportunity uh, came after my Prince uh, stint to join the Parliament Funkadelic, then, I, you know, I did. But when I went to Prince, I knew that I was a rocker. I just was young and didn't have... You know, mm -hmm. any direction. I was already songwriting, and Great. but I, I when I went to him, I absolutely knew that. If I yeah, I was still formulating. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I felt it, and I knew like, well, I know I'm a rock musician. Cause I, yeah, and I was I was really surprised. Um, it's nice to hear like you're influenced by not just like say a Larry Graham type, but like Getty Lee from Rush. Oh hell yeah. You're a big Getty Lee um, <laughs> fanatic, right? Well, I was thinking what connects those two things. They're both bassists and singers. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like Sting, too. But, like, you know. Uh, oh, and uh, what's his name from Yes? Um, Chris Squire. 
And you must you must have really loved um, love when they when they were in uh, when Yes got inducted into I just remembered into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Geddy Lee was the bassist for that. Yeah, that was a pretty good performance. <laughs> okay, they did you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was good. Yeah, you know we talking about real music people. No doubt. Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you like about the uh, Chris Squire? Oh gosh, that that underrated unsung genius. The late Chris Squire. I mean, that music that they did, in those late sixties, early seventies. Mm-hmm. Come on, yeah. I'm still listening yeah. to that fragile album right now. Okay, right. it's a great album. It's brilliant. I I want to write like that. I want to. You know what I mean? Like, yep. oh my gosh, it's 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 too much genius. It's just too much creativity. And you know, these people were British. Yeah. Okay. Right? Let's don't forget people. These people yeah, were sure. British, all right, with all that soul and all that feeling. So, you know, you just got to give it up. <laughs> you know? you got to give it up. And we got to give it up. We're here with Star Color. She's visiting us from San Diego. She has her album, Living Galaxy. I want to listen to a little bit more of Living Galaxy. This song, Jay Stone, is called I'll Kick Your Mother Funkin' Ass, yeah. okay? I know, I know you have fragile ears, so I hate to get crude like that. But we have to, we have to represent, okay? We got the real live Wonder Woman sitting with us right here. That's right. And then check out this song, though. Check out this tune, and let's talk about it on the other side. Hit that, Dominic. This is I'll Kick Your Mother Funkin' Ass by Star Colors. <laughs> Nice bit. I like that bass tone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Be afraid. Oh. Do they know who I am? Do they know who I am? Well, let me break it down. I love the drumming on this. Nightmare. Great. I know we're just gonna put my foot so far away. I'll kick your mother on it. Let's right. start a pitch, Jay. Come on. Right. That's right. I like when you throw that in. <laughs> I know it. I know how it is. What? <laughs> Have you made a video for this yet? I gotta be in the video. You know what? We're gonna do it up here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. What inspired that song? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Is it, that's, so much. That's one, there was a version of that recorded before, right? Well, or, you know what? I did it um, live and called out Clip Payne on this live version, which turned out insane. We did it the, uh, live at the Electric Factory in Philadelphia when I was opening for P-Funk. Mm. And then I realized, hey, maybe I should record this out, this song. Because I was just writing it then. Mm-hmm. When we performed it live, when Clip did it. Yeah. I was like, hey, this this kind of works. So I was like, you got to put it on the album, right? You know, don't mess around. But uh, uh, well, it, it it's absolutely from the 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 journey that we go through as musicians. You know, mm. the the journey of the crap and 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 yeah, who and, are you talking about producers? You know, not yeah. not being appreciated, not being paid, not being compensated. It's like, you know what? This is bullshit. Yeah, and particularly coming from being a woman it's a hundred times worse yeah oh my god oh my god hey let me you you were putting some stuff out on social media recently what were you talking about um 
uh, about like music rights, uh, people's oh. publishing rights. Like you're sending out some kind of warning oh. about that. I love that you paid attention to that. <laughs> <laughs> Would you believe that I had someone who previously worked with me as a promoter manager that actually put me and my uh, band out on our own um, headlining tour. Mm -hmm. Like a, a, it was a jam band West Coast tour. Okay. And we went out with a mobile home and vans and caravan and we did. Now, that was great. The jam band circuit. As you can imagine, mm -hmm. is rough. Yeah, doesn't really you know, pay that well, but what uh, we did it, and this person and his company fell apart. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of this two-year run, we end up with the three bands of us left and stranded out on the road. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I said left and stranded wow. out on the road. We all had to get back home to California from Colorado. <laughs> Jeez. We got back and then we went to hunt him down. Yeah. <laughs> I'll kick yeah. you motherfucker. <laughs> All right. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. It's honest. You oh, know what I mean? man. <laughs> Damn. But what about uh what's with the publishing? Oh, oh, thank you. This I was going to say that was that was his first offense. Okay. Then then Gonna come back years later after that, trying to be like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm reformed. I'm, I want to uh -huh. work with you again. You know, you're a genius. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Well, <laughs> I should have seen the wolf behind the cloud when he said, "Uh, I really, you know, I want to get, let's do this deal with you where you give up." Your sound recording rights. <laughs> there we go. And this investor mm -hmm. will invest in and in, you know own uh, uh, majority of the copyright to push your music. And, and I was like, "Do you think?" <laughs> I don't know if I can say that on the air. You can say yeah, it. It's all good. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think my head screws on and off? <laughs> right. Do I look like a black Barbie doll to you? Okay. Am I? You know. So of course I had to yeah, vanquish that asshole Ooh. and <laughs> let everybody know you retain and keep your copyrights and your songwriting, your sound recordings, and all your copyrights. All you songwriter people out there, hear me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do not let anyone ever talk you into giving up your copyrights. Your song, your sound recordings, ever. Wow. Never, ever. You hear that, y'all? Never. That's right. And that's good advice. J Stone's daughter here. I hope, hope, hope she heard that, too. Don't <laughs> ever give him up, My right? baby girl back there, my pretty girl. She, <laughs> that's, my, that's, my, that's my new little baby girl right. disciple back there. She's going to take over the world. Raina. She's going to be an astrophysicist, guitar-playing diva, okay? Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. All right, so let me ask you. I know you've told this story on other podcasts, mm. uh, so we want to have most uh, new stuff, but I do want to get your take on this story because I am interested in certain aspects of it. This uh, story of you uh, bum-rushing Paisley Park uh, <laughs> in 89, I guess your senior year in college, mm. and mm -hmm. you had been sending... Uh, demo packages to uh, Prince, I guess, to Paisley Park. Um, and so you were tired of them being rejected and not answered. So what happened? Absolutely. I'm uh, in last year of school in college, and I'd already started sending out my little demo tapes, mm -hmm. you know, throwing them out there. And got back the, the uh, standard. You remember when they give the rejection letters, when yeah. they actually sent back so, a reply? Yeah. 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 Okay. I got like three or four of them. It was like, you know what? Screw this. I am uh, going out there. So I became uh, long distance pen pal friends with Matt Bliston and Eric Leeds. Eric Leeds and Eric Alan Leeds. Leeds is from Pittsburgh. I was going to school in Pittsburgh at Duquesne University. Mm -hmm. And Alan Leeds, that's big. Alan Leeds comes back all the way going with uh, James Brown. He yep. used to be James Brown's tour manager, right. main manager. And his younger brother, Eric Leeds, is a great sax player who played with Prince for years. Yeah. Yeah. And I literally 
contacted the Lee's family in Pittsburgh and lied and told them I was a touring musician and I lost Eric and them's number. And, <laughs> there you go. And <laughs> give me the number again because I'm flying in from Paris or something. Like that. And they did. So I was like, bet. So I started <laughs> calling them up like, yo, man, look, I'm in school at Duquesne. And I'm trying to get this demo to Prince. You got to give him my shit, man. <laughs> he was like, wow, you was cool, Duke. <laughs> and you got my number. Yeah. I said, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, on with that. On with that. Listen, get this stuff to Prince. So they were, you know, Prince is working them like dogs. And at that time, uh, do you remember Mark Brown's awful group Maserati yeah 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 Yeah. remember that mess yeah yeah yeah. well they were occupying time and space and money and Prince was mad he was pissed he was pissed because they were losing money and he had wasted all his time and he was he was so he wasn't listening to demos I was like I'm not letting Maserati fuck my shit up I'm getting to this man right (laughs) so got you he wasn't feeling demos I was like oh no fuck Maserati I'm not feeling this so I said we going out there. Why not? Yeah. What, what, you know, what is it? He's a person. You know, he can be found. So I just started researching where he lived. Um, his mansion was in Excelsior, and the studio is in Chanhassen, mm-hmm. Minnesota. Okay. And um, I was like, okay. I went back to my father. That's pretty hard to find that out, by the way, in 89. Well, like, it's you, not like you, you can Google it. Well, you're right. It was yeah. before computers and phones yeah. and all that. So I had to actually get on the phone yeah. and yeah. harass people and, you know, wow. re, you know, that's the, pretty resourceful. You know, the, the old telemarketing right. way. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> by this time, when <clears throat> when I, um, I went back and asked my father, don't give me anything for Christmas, mm-hmm. just give me money to go drive to Minnesota. I'm going to rent a room at the college. I'm going to Prince and get a deal. Bam. And he said, all right. Mm-hmm. Don't sign anything yeah. until, you know, you get back with me. He gave me the money. Got in the car. We drove back to Pittsburgh and drove from Pittsburgh to Minnesota. It was like 16 hours on on speed in a snowstorm <laughs> following a tractor trailer. Uh, yeah. We get in, go find University of Minnesota, get a room. The next day we get up. Go to the mansion in Excelsior. Now, his mansion in Excelsior had a big, huge purple windmill in the background. And it was the only Jeez. house oh, on the block <laughs> with a big purple windmill. I was like, this got to be Prince's house. Who else in Minnesota <laughs> right. is going to have a freaking, you know? Right. So I go up to the guard gate, have my little demo tape. Now, I know I'm not getting in, but I'm bold. Right. I don't care. So I go up to the guard. I'm like, listen, I want to <laughs> give Prince my demo tape. He's like... You are bold, and I like you. Paisley Park is 10 minutes around the corner, this way, this way, this way. I said, bet, come on, so-and-so, we going to Paisley Park. So we get there, and the gates were open, which meant you could still drive into the parking lot. Uh-huh. Driving to the parking lot, Prince nice. uh, used to have these BMWs. had a yellow BMW, had a purple one, a black one, and they all had his little symbol and shit on them, you know. Yeah. And then he parked in his own little parking spot. It was like him. It was like, uh-huh. well him okay (laughs) whatever okay i'm trying to get in him so i used to write these notes dear prince i drove seventeen thousand miles to give you my demo tape peace and love star colors and i would open up his car door put the notes in the car seat put them on his windshield i was i was real bold real bold and young young right 19, I'm not even legal to drink. I'm like yeah. 19 years old. Right. I don't care. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I don't give a damn. So they were like, finally called us. They were like, hey, listen, you can finally come in. Miles Davis is leaving to go do something because that's when Miles Davis and Prince was doing some mm-hmm, shit. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, good, Miles. Okay, can you get out so I can come to the <laughs> studio now? Because you're too famous for anybody to be there, right? Thank right, you, right, Miles right, Davis. Right. So he finally gets out. So I go in and I have a not that bass. I had a, a my Fender Precision four string, okay, and on my shoulder, and a bag full of cassette tapes and bad pictures, and I'm literally roaming through Paisley Park, like up and down the balconies on the list, like looking for him. Like, uh-huh. okay, he's got to be around. <laughs> when I finally bump into him and literally bumped into him, like, bam! Almost knocked him down because he's only three feet tall. <laughs> <clears throat> and he has a huge head 
<laughs> Prince's head. I love him and I know he's gone, but his head was as big as that body of their guitar. Oh man. I'm serious. Yeah. With the bouffant and the yeah. <laughs> He was gorgeous. He wore more makeup than I have on now. <laughs> And I didn't have one hardly any. I was like, "Damn, I gotta learn how to do this." <laughs> he was gorgeous, and he looks. And the manager, who was Steve Fargnoli, remember from the Purple Rain movie? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Remember yeah. him? Yeah. He says, "Oh, hi, hun. Oh, you're uh, Eric Lee's friend. Oh, go ahead. You can go ahead and talk to him." And he leaves me there with him to talk to him. Right. So I'm like, "Thank you, Steve Fargnoli." He walks away. Oh. Here I'm standing here with Prince. He's staring at me and he's going. <laughs> so I'm like, look, Philadelphia. Hey, man, I didn't came from Philadelphia to give you my demo tape. He puts out his hand. Give me a hand. To shake it. Mm -hmm. Try to pull it back. He pulls my hand and does this the whole time we're talking. So keep pulling. He's pulling my hand wow. the whole time. I'm standing here going, well, here, let me give you my demo tape. Yeah. You know, because I know he got to go. And he's standing there looking at me. He goes, well, you know, there's, you know, there's certain things you have to give it to Eric Leeds. Uh, I mean, Alan Leeds upstairs. And <laughs> I said, listen, man, I sent Alan my stuff. I got back the letter. I'm giving it to you. All right. Where is that? He was like, OK, I'll tell you what. You go take this upstairs to Alan Leeds and you tell him, if I don't get your demo tape tonight, I'm going to kick somebody's motherfucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> I said, snatch. Okay. Snatch. The, he's still standing there watching. I'm going up the steps to Alan Leeds' office. Yeah. Going to the office. Boom. Mr. Leeds. Prince said, if he don't get this demo tape tonight, he's going to kick somebody's motherfucking ass. <laughs> he goes, oh. Come on, darling, come sit down. And so I sit down at his desk. He opens up his top desk drawer. Uh -huh. In the top desk drawer, all my re demo tapes rejected oh, in shit. bad pictures. He goes, Is this you? I go, Yeah, 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 that's me. He said, Oh, we didn't know who you were. He'll get it. Well, come on, sit down, relax. Wow. Is that a lesson in <laughs> wow. who you know? Wow. Then the next day, I get called back. He's like, well, bring your bass. You're uh -huh. going to audition with Prince and them. Sheila E. was the drummer. Dr. Fink was on keys. Sheila E. and Dr. Fink on yes. keys. Can you believe I played with Sheila E., Dr. Fink, mm -hmm. and Prince? Yeah. That is a hell of okay. a band. I mean, That's all right. Band. So I'm like tripping because now after all this craziness, I'm actually going to play with them. Mm -hmm. And of course, Prince is late. So I'm in. They're in the studio room uh -huh. looking across. the, And I'm in the playroom like this. Yeah. Bent down. Holding my bass, waiting for him. The techs have tuned it, and I'm waiting for him. He comes in, and I'm not lying, a mist <laughs> of smoke billowed into the room. What? <laughs> <laughs> then he, you know, sashays in. He has on a black and white suit, head to toe, uh -huh. boots, scarf, shoes, head, everything. Mm -hmm. Buffon it up. He's gorgeous. He's holding in his hands the notes that I wrote him and left in his car. Oh. <laughs> and he starts reading them. He goes, dear, dear Prince, I drove 17,000 miles. In front miles of everybody? In front of everyone. Damn. He's reading my notes. And I'm mortified now. I'm mortified. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm mortified. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm mortified. Then, <laughs> say that amp is me. He Ooh. starts walking around my body uh. in a circle y'all walking around me in a circle talking about yeah you know i'm hard on musicians you know i expect my musicians i've never seen a girl bass player i never seen a girl play bass uh. then he goes is that your boyfriend yeah you know i'm real too he's looking through the glass at the guy that's with me uh. okay <laughs> okay so he's having this dual conversation so he's like yeah you know i expect my musician to do this then he looks at us are you sleeping with him 
Oh, you know, I ain't never seen a girl bass player. Well, I don't know, but, 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 but are you living with him? Oh, man. <laughs> right. I'm sick of this Gemini shit. Okay. Right, I'm like, right. you know what? Enough of the Gemini crap. I stand up. Of course, I'm taller than him. So I back him into the wall. Yeah. And I'm like, look, man, did you listen to the demo tape or what? He goes, I listened to your demo tape. <laughs> I think you have a lot of talent I think you have a lot of potential I want to work with you I think you can be good He takes his guitar Puts it on Looks at me He goes, come on, it's in B flat And just starts playing I pick up my bass I start playing Sheila E comes in, gets on the drums Dr. Fink comes in, gets nice. on the keys mm. Now we all jamming He is tripping that I can play yeah so he's like in and out my face he's twirling around <laughs> oh a girl damn you can play okay and i'm like you are psycho so i just keep playing <laughs> sheila e screaming going just ignore him just lock with me just lock with me ignore him <laughs> i'm like you're right because this motherfucker's crazy <laughs> so then he, he starts soloing and then he says are you solo then i start doing something else you know bass on the bass yeah yeah and he goes now he drops to his knees. He's like, what's going on? You can't do that. I'm like, well, you just said to do that. What are you, crazy, motherfucker? Oh, so uh, all of a sudden, the tech comes in. He goes, Miles Davis is at the airport. He needs help. So he throws his guitar up in the air. The tech comes out of nowhere, catches the guitar. <laughs> Prince runs out. Sheila runs out. Fink runs out. I'm standing against the wall, holding my bass like. <sighs> wow. <laughs> Sheila comes back and says, listen, Prince said we can keep playing with you. So Fink and her come back in. I finished nice. playing with them. Nice. Then she says, come on, let's sit down and talk. Sheila and I sit down and talk. She says, you know what? Um, we're all really impressed with you. You know, mm -hmm. Prince is highly impressed with you. We've never seen, you know, uh, anyone uh, uh, like you. And he definitely wants to work with you. And um, we talked about being a woman, you know, in the, in the business, how difficult that is. And she gave me a bunch of... Uh, pointers about that and she said you know i've never had to audition for any gig i've had before because of being in escovito right you know right you know yep. her family oh, yeah. is yeah. right yeah we know and um she said i've always just got the gig yeah. she said i could have never done what you came in here and did that was insane we're blown away and i'm like nice well cool you know <laughs> all right sheila yeah, yeah you know so next day I says prince is gonna call you so I'm, mind you, this is before the cell phone, so I'm sitting on top of this one phone in this boarding house. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mind you, it's Minneapolis in January, so it's like mm. 30 below zero, all right? So I'm in there on top of the phone. I'm like, I don't care what's going on. Nobody's getting this phone until Prince calls me. I'm literally <laughs> holding the phone hostage right. in the place, right? Like, nobody gets it. So he finally calls. And uh, first an assistant calls and says, Prince is going to call you. Then he calls. Uh -huh. Okay, so he's like, hi, oh, yeah, this is Prince. I just wanted to thank you for coming out, and I, you know, I really uh, think you have a lot of talent. And and I said, oh no, no, thank you so much for seeing me. Say, like, I don't want to tell you what to do, but you could stay here with me while I finish the Love Sexy album, and you know, then you know we can go on. And I'm like, I I don't want to be a vanity. Or an right, abalone. Right. You understand what I mean? Uh, uh, I don't uh, want to be none of your yeah. women's. Yeah. I just want to deal. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. And he was definitely coming that way. And I was young. And people were like, girl, you should. I was like, you crazy. I got more respect by saying no. Right. <laughs> okay. And telling him that I'll see you when you finish that. And I'm going to go back to school, finish doing what I got to do. Mm -hmm. Of course, the next time I see him is at like a year and a half not quite two, and I'm with George Clinton, and I'm hired by P-Funk, mm -hmm. and yep. George is signed to Paisley. So when he sees me again, <laughs> he sees me with George Clinton and P-Funk, and he's like, <laughs> what are you doing with George and the P-Funk? You're supposed to be with me. And George is like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, she Funkadelic. She Funkadelic. She ain't going nowhere. And George and Prince actually started, oh, uh, war 
over me yeah. and and um it was insane the Pr- prince wanted myself and michael hampton and belita woods to mm-hmm. come over mm-hmm. and george was like Hell no. <laughs> She's Funkadelic. Yeah. She ain't going nowhere. So there's a lesson, people. Don't let big superstars control your career yeah. <laughs> without you knowing. Well, that, that that's amazing. <laughs> Let me ask you, because um, we're getting ready to ask you. We, I want to see you uh, perform a song here live for us. But I just want to, something about that story is like really amazing. So this is going back years and years and years, way before, you know, Me Too or anything like this, right? And then how you were so young and you were obviously, um, I wouldn't say starstruck, but very like enamored with the scene. Oh. Like you drove all the way there. To- totally. you're, you're putting uh, totally. the notes on his car, right? Totally. You're, yeah. you're walking around Paisley Park yeah. looking for him. Yet somewhere along the line, and I can feel you because I can kind of, I can kind of relate to your headspace like, Something about how it was going kind of, I could say, it annoyed you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like some people are so Star Trek, they'll let people treat them like, mm-hmm. I'm sure Prince was used to that. Like, let yeah. them treat Oh, well, he definitely, you know I mean? that's why he ended up having so much respect for me. And I wish that right. we would have been able to uh, stay in closer contact as friends because mm-hmm. I know I could have been. Uh, a positive good to him because I would have kicked his ass about that, what, what, what he fell into. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. What gave you, like, where did you? Where did that presence of mind come from? Is that like kind of part of your upbringing, or like what? How did you know to like? Because you you stood your ground like really well on that. I right? would I would definitely say from trying to be like my father. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. My father. My father was the hero. You know, he was strong. He was intelligent. He was you know uh, not taking any crap, and he was supporting this daughter <laughs> who was different yeah you know and i think it just came you know from that and of course my mother's also a, a educator and a teacher too and a a, a, a true a debutante you mm-hmm. know much more of a lady than i am i should try to be more of a lady like my mom <laughs> maybe one day but right now we on a mission y'all <laughs> we on a mission well that's fantastic and I still got a lot more I want to talk to you about. However, we would be remiss to not have you uh, perform something for us here since we got you here in this beautiful Soul Graffiti Studios. So why don't you uh, go on over to the studio, play Absolutely. something for us. I'm going to move Absolute. this for you. Thank you. And we're we're talking to Star Colors y'all. She's been telling us all about her life, all about her career, all about her music. She's got a new album uh, or her latest album is called Living Galaxy. She has three albums out. She also has a live album out as well. Be sure to check us out. Check her out. Um, she's here in Soul Graffiti Studios. She's got her bass. She's come here all the way from uh, San Diego. Um, she's just going to play and sing for us, y'all. A real live Wonder Woman on bass. Take your time, Star. All right. Our first video show, Jay Stone. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. All right. This um, <clears throat> this first tune is from my first album, Welcome to the Universe. Welcome to the Universe. Which I still have to mass release because when I first did it, this was before all of us were independent companies and people. And sure. And... Uh, so it never got properly released. So I, I, I will still release it. Mm-hmm. But Great. this is uh, from now. All right. Ah. Got the five string bass there. <laughs> I love it. All right, Joe. Where are we at?
<laughs> that was swung. You hear that, Raina? Make it happen. It's a solo, make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> that was ill. All right. Thank you. Star Colors. So that one was Make It Happen. How make about Femme Fatale? Femme Fatale. <laughs> Stop. 
He's got nice. it. You want it, y'all. Star <laughs> Colors, the Femme Fatale. That's the theme song for an action movie coming out 2022. Yeah. <laughs> that was dope come on over here star let us let us talk to you for a little bit more that was fantastic thank you for uh bringing your bass all the way here to the bay area um that was great that was so great hey what do you um what's your writing process like what uh, how do you uh compose songs wow well you guys know you guys are songwriters it's it's a uh... Sweating like a dog. I mean. <laughs> 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 Woo! 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 Oh my goodness! Right, come back to earth. Hey, right. When did um, you start playing five string? Oh wow! <laughs> you know, I didn't start playing five string till I was in the P funk <clears throat> and right. Skeet, Rodney Skeet yeah, Curtis. I love Rodney Skeet Curtis. He's a genius. You all know that genius. Yeah. And Lodge Curry mm-hmm. encouraged me. Uh-huh. To start playing five string, so okay. I started playing five string uh, after I was in the P funk, and <clears throat> then uh, got endorsements with uh, ESP and Yamaha, which oh. is that lovely bass there. And um, you know, <laughs> you know, um, it, I had to learn it. You know what I mean? Had right. to learn that low B, that low B. You know, yeah. had to had, uh, learn how to. Incorporated, and then I started writing with it, and I was like, "Oh, I love this!" Right? Because it gave uh, uh, more range to the bass, uh, especially for writing. Mm-hmm. And and you, and you know, playing yeah. guitar, you probably play guitar too, in, uh, bit, as well yeah. as bass. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but definitely for um, for writing, I, you know, it's interesting. Just I think just because of playing cello. And, yeah, right. and and acoustic guitar. Yeah. Because I still play acoustic guitar, mm-hmm. just you know, definitely for writing. Yeah. And you know, if if we're vibing. <laughs> you know, right. we wanna vibe. We sing that by some, you know, by some fire. knees. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but to definitely um I would say it, it depends. Like like if I have something to say. Yeah. Like kick your funkin' ass, I have something to say. Mm-hmm. Right. So I wrote all of that out, then I did the music. So Got you know it. what I mean. Yeah. So it, it 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 depends. Femme Fatale, Vernon Reed. Here we go with my br- big Vernon brother Vernon Reed, Reed from Color. Living Color. Yeah. He called me a Femme Fatale, and, ah. and he said it must be hard for you to be who you are and how you are doing this. Mm-hmm. He said it 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 must be so difficult for you. He said um, it, it's like the curse of beauty. And something else, and I was looking at him like, come on, man. I don't need to hear this stupid shit. But he said, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it, it was like, he's like, no, no, you, you, you got to hear what I'm saying. You know, you, you're, you're wielding this femme fatale power. Yeah. So I said, all right, Vernon, I'm going to get you. So I, <laughs> I wrote Femme Fatale just to answer him. Mm-hmm. Got you. Okay. <laughs> let me ask you about, uh, speaking of rocking, let me ask you about VH1, uh, the mm. Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp show. Mm-hmm. So that, um, that opportunity actually uh, did a lot for you and for your career as far as... Um, I have a quote from you, like officially getting into the rock genre, like officially into rock and roll. So, what was this show? This is VH1 Fantasy Camp. When when was this? Like how long this ago? Was was it? This was 2011, 2012. It's like what a reality show where you. This was supposed to be. Now you guys know how awful those reality shows are, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. This one was about three famous rock musicians being a counselor. To three different bands, mm-hmm. excuse me, comprised of five people, and every day um, was a boot camp of learning all these songs and music, mm-hmm. having these different rock stars just walk in and surprise us, mm-hmm. right? Like I got to tell you about Paul Stanley, okay? That's that's something. Yeah, and, I um, about that. Yeah. And and we also had to go to venues around LA mm-hmm. and perform. Okay. And then we had to go into the studio. And do an original song with these people we never met. Oh, wow. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And had to write a song together. Right. Yeah. Now, that was interesting. Now, my counselor for that was Mark Hudson. 
Mark Hudson. You guys know Mark Hudson? That name sounds familiar. Mark Hudson was um what well he's a famous rock producer now. But back in the seventies, mm-hmm. uh when Sonny and Cher had their show on the air, oh, his, okay. his his brothers were called the Hudson brothers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were like on the television show, then they got their own television show. Okay. So he was part of that, and and, and then he became this famous rock producer later. He's uh, a Grammy Award winning uh, producer of Aerosmith and Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, yeah. and, you know what I mean? Like yeah. people like Stephen Stephen Tyler worships this man. Okay, as arrogant and as, as y'all know he yeah. is, he <laughs> will crawl on his knees to this man. Oh, so this man Mark Huston chose me to be in this one of these groups, right. and then every day. We'd come in early in the morning, and we'd have a, a band meeting. Then we would go and start rehearsing a whole list of songs. And while we would be rehearsing them, some rock star would walk in the door. Mm-hmm. Phil Cullen did. Marky Ramon did. You know, um, okay. my boys, Matt Sorum was already in with his band. He came mm-hmm. over to play with me from Guns N' Roses, right? Uh-huh. Duff McKagan, Guns N' Roses, trip, and he jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling it out. <laughs> That's right. I'm calling you out, Duffy. Anyway. He was hating? Yeah, he's hating on the girl. Anyway, um, my, when Paul Stanley came, I'll never forget this because we were going over some Rolling Stones something, right? And the producers are all lined up with the, you know, the camera oh, people yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. and the little host lady, little cheerleader. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. <laughs> now we have a Paul Stanley. <laughs> so in walks Paul Stanley, and everybody wow. just shits. Everybody goes, oh, oh right, oh. right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes in. He and Mark are old friends from the seventies. They were on Casablanca together, you know, blah mm-hmm. blah blah. So they friends. They're like, so he walks and he goes, "What is this? Her? Is this the girl you talking about?" Mark goes, "Yeah, that's her." Paul Stanley walks up to me on the microphone uh-huh. and we're like this, uh-huh. face to face, nose wow. to nose. <laughs> we're singing in the same microphone. I'm playing bass. Yeah. Wow. I'm playing bass and singing. And Paul Stanley and I are like this, oh, wow. nose to nose singing. He, it, The producers <laughs> are behind the camera <laughs> losing it. Okay. Wow. They're like Paul Stanley loves her. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. <laughs> right. We finish the song. Paul hugs me. Big huge hug. We hug each other. He's like, now that's what I'm talking about. This girl is what we're talking about. So then, every day from then on, every rock star that came in yeah. was like, that's the girl, right? And I didn't tell them. That I was from P Funk or Prince. Ah. I just auditioned okay. and played a Rush song. <laughs> yeah, I was played say, you Tom Sawyer. With Tom Sawyer. I right? auditioned with Tom uh, Sawyer. Nice. What? Yeah, that's right. I did it. Oh, I auditioned wow. with Tom Sawyer and sang and played it. That's right. That's the shit. And everybody was like, "Is that a black woman in there doing Playing that? Rush? Like, what? Right. Like, oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Of all things, you know." So the producers ran out and told me, "Like, hold it, don't leave because you're already in the show. Yeah, we want you oh, to yeah. know." You're in the show. You're in it. Don't have to wait. We're letting you know. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. So when Paul did that, we had to perform at the Beverly Hills Gibson Theater that same night. Okay. So then we go do the show. So we do the same thing we did in rehearsal, and everybody's tripping, right? So when we get off stage, Paul, Mark Hudson, the VH1 producers, are all huddled back. They're like, call Star Colors in here. I'm like, ooh, I'm summoned. <laughs> Get summoned back. They go, listen, dear. We think that you are the one. You are the superstar we're going to be following. We're going to be following your career. We're bringing you officially into the rock genre. Paul gave me his publicist, Lee. She's still a good friend to this day. Mm-hmm. To do some publicity charity exercises with okay. me <laughs> like i got called to do some some charity work and and make appearances uh with this lady and and she took me wow, to that's... the rainbow 
uh-huh. in in L.A. to introduce me as officially being part of the rock genre, uh-huh. and a bunch of different things that I had to do with her that, that Paul Stanley like assigned. Mm. You okay? Yeah. So even though we didn't get paid money for doing the show, all this other shit came with it. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. and that was one of them. When I went to Nam that year, all the rockers. I'm talking about rockers who I've admired for years that I never knew were all coming up to me like, we they love you. They yeah, knew yeah, who you were. yeah. They're yeah. like, because they watch the oh, show. All right. yeah, yeah, now, yeah. mind wow. you, Great. this show was only coming on VH1 and VH1 Classic. Okay. When they had VH1 Classic. And so I was like, well, who knows who's seeing this? You know what I mean? Right. But all these rock musicians were watching. Uh. So I go to NAM and they're all like embracing me. They're like taking photos with me, wow. like welcome in, you know, and and uh, uh, Bernard Fowler from the Rolling Stones, you know, background singer mm-hmm. from New York, mm-hmm. you know Bernard, you mm-hmm. know Bernard, and um, uh, uh, the Living Color Cats. They were like, yeah. "Baby girl, we are officially bringing you in to the rock genre with us." So it was definitely all that, and that's something else that people don't understand about the different uh, uh, genres. Country is like this, mm-hmm. and rock. Okay. It's, it's like there's etiquette and there's protocol. See, mm-hmm. we we come from R and B and funk. Right. I'm sorry, but the R and B and funk world that we come from mm-hmm. doesn't respect us like we should be. Mm-hmm. Word. But, but if you step into then you go into that rock world, yeah. you go into that country world, all of a sudden you're gonna see and feel. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, this is great. I never knew this existed for us. Wow. You know, so it it, it, it is definitely um, a real thing, a real protocol. Yeah. That's, let me ask you. Um, so, again, that's a very uh, instructive thing for our younger listeners and watchers. Um, what made you decide to do that? Because you basically did a okie doke on them. Like you had already been playing. You already had a career. And you kind of you kind of just snuck in there as like a contestant. Like, you why know, did you do that? It seemed it was evidently very smart to do. But like, where did that the I had an, decision come from? I had from? an actress friend who was a, a actress and a filmmaker, and she was, you know, in what do you call it in in the wire in line, you know, with the buzz of yeah, yeah. auditions right. and things. She's in the loop. She sent me. That audition. She said, you go to this. I think this is going to... I said, a reality show? You know, all I could think about was all right, the crap, right? right? right, right, right. And she said, no, no, trust this is going to be... So I went, and so that's how it ended up happening. And then, of course, it ended up being career opening. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. But you couldn't have known that mm-hmm. before. Right. You would have to go through it. So I'm, I'm glad that I, I did. It definitely that's opened beautiful. up and changed my whole life and mm-hmm. career. Yeah, I guess just being open-minded to certain opportunities that you wouldn't expect. Mm-hmm. I got a couple of things I got to ask you before we wrap up. Let's listen to, before we do it, let's listen. To, I just got to hear one more song off of Living Galaxy. Dominic, could you please play Seduce Me? Jay Stone, listen to the drums on the intro. I hate to keep, I keep going off about the drummers, but <laughs> this is, sounds great. Let's hear this. Uh, this is called Seduce Me from Star Code. Listen to this. And then the you got a good meter to play to those drums. Sandro oh, Feliciano, baby, my drummer. <laughs> nice, I like that bass line. Great. Tango 
I got to get on that song. Hey, do you, <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you record that intro, because you have to have really good meter to, I was talking about the drums and bass to play to that. Do you guys, uh, you just play that together in the studio? Oh, we rehearse. Mm-hmm. We 100% rehearse. I mean, you guys know, you guys are, are excellent live performing and recording musicians. It. You gotta rehearse. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying. Thank so, you. and and if if you put in the pre homework to rehearse, then you can go into the studio mm-hmm. and relax right. and record and not be you know do yes. it before yeah that and then you can go in and you can flow like that. So and get more creative exactly. on top of that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Do you like to mic your amp or go direct or both when you record? You or? know that's totally up to the engineer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I okay. mean, I mean, you know, I <laughs> yeah. mean, you know, really, the, the engineer and, and the producer. Now, I'm, now I'm becoming more of a producer myself, but I still rely on the engineer. The cats. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, you know what I mean. So if 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 they say yes or yay or nay, whatever sounds the best, right? You know, I don't ever uh, assume that. Uh, Got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to ask you a couple more things uh, before we wrap up, just because I want to make sure we mention. First of all, um, I, I like that you're you're involved with, I guess, with uh, Malalia Franklin's. Mm. Oh, by the way, you used to play with Malalia Franklin in her mm. solo group, right? No. Uh, her son is it Seth? Seth. And your your company, Cosmic Nation. Mm-hmm. You're going to be, or you're already working on a documentary about the untold story of women in P-Funk, correct? Seth uh, has written a brilliant book based on his mother, Malia oh, Franklin. Oh, okay. Hmm. Seth wrote the book already. Mm-hmm. Dope. And it's, it's uh, you know, covering the history of the P-Funk women, starting with his mother and, and them, and goes to me. Ends with, with my time. Mm-hmm. Nice. And yeah, I was I was oh, honored nice to book. be. Yeah, well, I was great. honored to be included. And he told me he said, "Star, I you know started back in Mom and them, and I stopped at you." Can we get that book, or is it not? You out know yet? what? I'm ask him. Okay, okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask him too. To read it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and and he did that, and then we talked about okay, we got to do you know documentary mm-hmm. film on this especially now that his mom is gone yeah mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and i love mally mally was a mama to me and um that brief period that i got to perform with her was was great i mean you know just that that, that history right you know yeah we're I, I just think that's cool um that's been for some reason i don't know if anybody means anything by it but that's been overlooked we just interviewed uh shirley hayden at the top of this year and she was talking about like it it hurt her feelings like she was at home and she just saw on tv like people accepting that lifetime achievement grammy i was there and uh you you were there i was at the grammy she said nobody even contacted her okay now here we go this is some of the reason i was telling you guys i was there because george invited me Uh because i'm still one of these beloved mafiosi family people you understand active yeah yeah. but I felt bad for Shirley and Malia and Dawn and uh, these women. Dawn, yeah, Dawn Silva. And Lynn and, mm-hmm. you know, Lynn all Abram. all of these women from the Brides of Funkenstein Sheila. and from Parlette and Sheila and, and, and uh, 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 Shirley and Belita and, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and, 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 and um, Jessica Cleves. Yeah. Jessica, Jessica Cleves. Cleves. Yeah. And, you know, I, I felt bad for them. I didn't feel so much bad for me because I was after the period that they were being right, honored for. Right. And I'm like, you know, this is ridiculous. Why how can you not honor these women? They the the sound of those records wouldn't be uh-huh. if they were not singing all I'm that you. stuff. <laughs> all that incredible stuff that they're doing. Well, yeah, so it's, it's on samples and stuff. Yeah. 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 So Seth and I decided That's that a beautiful thing. We're gonna do a documentary and my company's gonna produce with him. You know, that's and, great. We're yeah. gonna help promote that yeah. too. That's yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you um, this is just a random thing that I heard somewhere. Did the late Jack Bruce <laughs> give you permission to do Sunshine <laughs> of Your Love as a cover? 
Jack Bruce, late bass player for Cream. Jack Bruce, people, all of you who are smart and intelligent and fortunate enough to know who Cream was, who Cream is, and who the late, great Jack mm-hmm. Bruce was, um, could understand the depth of this. Mm-hmm. When, we, when I met him, I was invited to the House of Blues in L.A. when it was still open by one of uh, the former P-Funk managers who was working with Jack Bruce, Vernon Reed, some other jazz person who was doing this group with Vernon and Jack mm-hmm. Bruce and them. He had oh, some yeah. special wow, mm-hmm. cool. thing. Yeah. He came back so to the green room and, you know, and I'm like, hey, Vernon, okay, hey, hey, Mr. Bruce. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Mr. Bruce, it's an honor to meet you, sir. And he was so nice. He took pictures with me. Uh-huh. He said, I know you are the baddest bass player. He said, I give you permission to do my song sunshine of your love live whenever you want and that's the only cover song that i throw into my set is sunshine of your love because jack bruce yeah gave me permission dope isn't that cool (laughs) (laughs) that's way cool i can't believe that story that's fantastic do you have um Finally, do you have any, like, I don't know, you've already gave, given us a lot of advice, but any parting advice you'd give mm. people out there trying to start in a band, get in a band, especially young ladies out there? I would say, uh, especially to really? my, my young sisters and my baby girl back there, <laughs> that you must, you must, you must understand that this is not a playground, it is not a tea party, and they're not going to be nice. Ladies, it is not going to be nice to you. It is not going to be friendly. It's going to be hard. You're going to have to keep your respect of yourself and not let yourself be taken outside of your respect and your comfort zones. Or, or what you well, you know know is right, what you know you uh, will not do. And do not let anyone, uh, especially ladies... Do not let anyone try to manipulate or uh, convince you to do something that you know is adversely wrong to your being, right? Okay. Right. And, you know, on the larger tip, especially for the musicians that I hope are still out there learning and uh, honing the craft like you both have already and like you know we do um to stay true to your vision stay mm-hmm. true stay true to your path don't let anyone tell you especially when you're creating when you're writing when right. you're creating mm-hmm. you know how difficult it is oh yeah and 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 how much of your soul, how much of your 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 essence, your blood, your being that you put into these songs, and you hope, <laughs> you hope yeah. that something resonates with somebody, and hope that somebody maybe will like your songs. Right. That's a painful process. Oh, hell yeah. Yes. But it's one that we do as, as songwriters. So I, I I would say. Stay true to your craft, mm-hmm. stay true to your vision, stay true to your art, and always remember the Amazon warrior is there to protect and defend you <laughs> and your vision of music, and I will kick somebody's motherfucking ass <laughs> if they say different. <laughs> that's a great way to end. Thank you, Star. Yeah. Let me shake your hand. Yeah. Thank you so much. Brother, thank you for coming here. Thank you for it's having me. Having you here. Absolutely awesome. Mm. You guys, I have to say, I've done many interviews. This is by far. The best, right? Okay, right cool. The awesome best. Stuff. You heard it here. Yeah. The Out Podcast is <laughs> the best. Yeah, <laughs> we're using that for the commercial right there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say a few parting words. That was fantastic. Thank you again, Star Colors, for being with us. Uh, be sure to get her album, Living Galaxy. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for Cosmic Nation. 
my boy, executive producer Scott Shepard. Scott Shepard is a big part of uh, making this happen, and he's here as well. Also, want to give a shout out to Clyde, Clyde the Funky Road Manager, and a P Funketeer helping uh, Star get here in one piece. Also, want to shout out Raina, and uh, that's Raina Stone, part of the Family Stone. <laughs> Not that Family Stone, but this Family Stone. Right. And uh, it was great having her here as well, you know, and she had a great uh, role model to check her out. No doubt. And uh, it's just been great having all of you guys here. Um, this is our last official episode of the year and our first video episode. How do you think our first video episode went, Jason? Man, that was dope. It was a little out of my comfort zone, but I started to get into it about oh, halfway man. through. Yeah, I'm not used to it. people looking at me. I usually can, you know, pick you my know. nose and do other stuff while we're, you know, you'll get watch that, that Don Cornelius <laughs> mic thing going. <laughs> yeah. I got to get that deeper voice. <laughs> Um, you guys, we got a pretty cool <laughs> special. We'll say it's our first special um, kind of a documentary we made. Back on October 16th, we went to La Raza Park in San Francisco, and we, there was a Latin rock uh, festival there that we filmed, and we got to interview many beautiful people. We interviewed oh, yeah. Juan Escovito, Sheila E.'s brother. Mm, nice. We interviewed Michael V. Rios, who, uh, the painter who does all the Santana's albums and stuff like that. That was a beautiful interview. Oh, yeah. Uh, Malo was there. Pearl Bandito was there. We talked to Johnny Gunn. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked to Yvonne Fembres, who is son yep. of Bootsy Collins. And uh, we, we filmed all that, and Chris helped us with that as well. Special thanks to Scott Shepard and Leslie. What's Leslie's last name? Big Leslie Lewis. Leslie Lewis was a big part of that as well. Yeah. And, of course, Richard Segovia. That special is coming out soon. The release date is... <laughs> that, came out. that came out, right? <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, we will be back in 2022. I think we might get Juan Escovito in as a oh, guest yeah. as well. Most definitely. We'll definitely have... a. Uh, are back for our super group and that is it uh dominic i'm going to ask you to hit give me a little more, more of that let your star shine music and uh before you guys run out can we take a picture Absolutely. somebody take our picture Let's do go, it. go ahead and play that phone. music all right Yeah, yeah, like we're gonna show it. Sure, we'll do that right now.